Hello everyone and welcome back to part four of the streetlight cardigan. Today I'm going to show you guys how to do the assembly portion of your sweater. To do this part you will need either a yarn needle or the hook that you've been using throughout. I'm going to be showing you guys how to sew it together by slip stitching with your hook. So I would grab that and then you're just going to need all of your pieces. And what we're going to be doing first is taking our back panel and you want to make sure that the correct side is facing up towards you and then take your first front panel and make sure that the correct side is facing down and sandwiched with the correct side of the back panel. So your wrong sides will be on the outside right now. And that is because when we sew it together, the seam will will we'll want the seam to be on the inside of your sweater so after everything's all seamed you will turn it correct side out but this is going to be my front and back panel i'm just going to use my little samples here this will be my back panel and i'm just going to show you guys how to sew it all together and for this particular sweater it doesn't really matter which side is your wrong or right side just make sure when you're choosing that you have the same wrong side for all of the panels because you will want all the rows to line up correctly so i believe i had row one as my right side and that was the side of the panels that i decided to be on the outside of my sweater so just make sure you have all of them the same so to begin, you take your back panel and then your first front panel, it doesn't matter which one, and you're just going to want to line them up so you can see right here at the corner, which is where our shoulder seam is actually going to be. We're going to be working the same stitches together. So you can see that very first stitch is only going to work with that very first stitch and then the second with the second the third with the third, and all the way across until we have the first front panel sewn to the back panel. So just go ahead and grab your hook and you should still have a tail of yarn attached to your front panel. If not, no worries, you can just grab your skein of yarn and make a slip knot and attach it to your hook. If maybe you cut your yarn too short or something like that or forgot to leave a tail, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to be using the tail of my yarn from my front panel. And to begin, you just want to insert your hook into that first stitch of the front panel and the first stitch of the back panel. And then just yarn over and pull the yarn through both stitches. And then again, put your hook into the second stitch of the front panel and the second stitch of the back panel, yarn over, pull through both stitches and then also through that loop on your hook. Again, insert your hook through the front panel and the back panel, yarn over, pull the yarn through both panels and the loop on your hook and just do this all the way across until you've worked your hook through all of the stitches at the top, very last row of your front panel, lining it up perfectly with the back panel. Make sure you don't skip any stitches or do any crooked and put your hook in the wrong spot. Just line it up evenly. Okay, now you can see our little seam that we just made. You can see it down here at my finished sweater. That's the inside seam. So when you flip it out, this will actually be the outside of our sweater. And now we're just gonna repeat that same thing. First, go ahead and yarn over, pull your yarn through the loop on your hook and then just cut your yarn. Or if you're using the tail of your yarn, you can just pull it all the way through to finish. We'll weave those ends in later. And then you're just going to repeat the same process on the other side. So you can take your second front panel and then just line it up on the opposite side. And then do the same exact thing. Just work your hook through the first stitch of the front and back panel, the second, the third, all the way across. 
and you'll have a small gap in between the front panels and stitches of the back panel that are unworked. This is just our neckline area. If you wanted to use a yarn needle instead of your hook, you can just use that tail of yarn that you have and just use a tapestry needle like this and do the same thing like we did with our hook. You can just work it lining up the stitches evenly all the way across. I just prefer using my hook, but you can figure out what you like best. There's a lot of videos out there to teach you how to do a mattress stitch and you can follow along with that. So once you have both front panels sewn to your back panel, you'll have that gap left and that's supposed to be like that. You should, you should have some stitches that were left unworked. You can see them here in my big sweater. I had five stitches in between the front panels that were left unworked. And if you're following along with my pattern, you can see this photo included in it that shows exactly what we just did, seaming the front panels to the back panel. And now we will be moving on and sewing the sleeve to both the back and front panels. So the seam that we had just created at the shoulder is going to be the seam in this picture in my left hand that we're gonna line the sleeve up with evenly. So that seam that we just made, we want it to be directly in the center of our sleeve panel to make sure that our sweater is even. And you can see here with my little miniature sample, this is gonna be my tiny little sleeve that I'm gonna show you guys how to sew onto the front and back panel. And you should get this easily because it's exactly what we just did sewing the front panels to the back panel. So once again, you can use the tail of yarn from when you finished off your sleeve, or you can just use a fresh strand of yarn, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna line up that sleeve directly in the middle of our front and back panel. So the seam that we just made should be exactly in the middle stitch of your sleeve. And if you're new to sewing pieces together, I would recommend getting some stitch markers and just placing them throughout your sleeve and panels, just attach them together to make sure that your um, sleeve doesn't move around while you're working and that you don't bun bunch it up too much in one spot or accidentally put your hook in the wrong spot. They're very helpful and if you're new to this, I definitely recommend giving that a shot. So you're going to be doing this just as you had before, except now when you're sewing the sleeve onto the front and back panel, you're actually going to be sticking your hook into the ends of the row of the front and back panel. So your hook will still go into that stitch of the sleeve, but you'll just line it up and put your hook into the ends of the row of the back and front panel. It doesn't really matter too much where you put your hook. It doesn't matter if you do it in a different spot than before, as long as you try and kind of keep it even and just stick the hook through, yarn over and pull through and just slip stitch across. Don't pull it too tightly and just make sure that that center seam is directly in the center of your sleeve and just do it all the way across the row until your entire sleeve is attached and then I would double check and make sure that you kept everything aligned up and that half your stitches are working through the front panel and the other half of your stitches were worked through the back panel. Okay, and now you can see my little miniature sweater. We have the back panel and front panel sewn and now the first sleeve sewn. And you're just going to repeat that same process on the second side so you can take your second sleeve and then just once again attach it to the other side use your stitch markers to hold your spot and then just slip stitch it all the way across and then after that we just have to sew up the side and the sleeve seam to finish it off 
So to do that, we're going to be doing the same exact thing by just slip stitching with our hook. And it doesn't really matter what direction you go in. You can go do the sleeve first. You can do the side first. It doesn't matter as long as you get it sewn. You can see the little seams that it cre creates. Your sweater won't look as crazy as mine. Mine looks a little crazy right now since I'm using my tiny little sample. But now I'll show you guys how to sew the side up. So you're going to take your hook and then just slip stitch your yarn wherever you prefer. You can join it at the cuff of your sleeve or you can join it at the ribbing of the bottom of the sweater. I'm going to show you guys how to do it by attaching to the ribbing of the bottom of the sweater. So just make a slip knot. And then once again, insert your hook into the first stitch of the ribbing on both ends. So you can see that I'm once again inserting my hook through both panels, the front and the back panel of the ribbing. And then just pulling it all the way through and pulling it through the loop on my hook to secure it. And then again, insert your hook into the second stitch of both front and back panel. And then in the third, and you then just do this all the way up the ribbing, all the way up the side of your sweater until you reach the armpit area. So you can see here on my actual sweater, you just work all the way up until you get to the armpit. And then you can rotate your work and just continue down slip stitching all the way to the cuff of your sleeve. Or if you'd rather start at the sleeve, you can do that too. You just attach your yarn to the sleeve and work from the sleeve to the armpit and then the armpit to the bottom of the hem of the sweater. Doesn't matter either way, whichever you prefer. And you're just gonna do this on both sides of the sweater. So do the first side and then do the same thing to the second side. The one thing you'll want to check for is to make sure that your panels are lined up correctly. Sometimes when you're sewing it together, you accidentally put your hook too far along through one panel and it can become a little crooked. So you can see here just the rows are lined up evenly and that's why I recommend using stitch markers. You can just place it every few rows and that'll help keep you on track because you don't want it to look uneven on the outside. You'll want your rows to line up perfectly. And then you can just turn your sweater correct side out once you're done sewing both sides and both sleeves together. And this is how it looks correct side out. And now our seams are hidden on the inside. And now we can do the trim of our sweater. The trim is very simple. We're just going to be joining our yarn with the slip stitch to the corner of the left front panel. So when it's laying out in front of you, it'll be the left panel in front of you or the right panel when it's worn. And your stitch count is also not super important here, so don't stress out about that. You just wanna make sure that your stitches are worked evenly around the opening of your sweater. And to begin with row one, it's just chain one and single crochet all the way around. So you're going to be working up that first panel and then across the back neckline and then back down the second panel by just single crocheting all the way around. And then you'll be doing this until you reach the bottom corner of that ribbing down there. And then we're gonna turn our work and then just work all the way back for round for row two by doing a single crochet, but this time in the front loop only. My trim is actually already on my sweater, but I'm going to pretend that it's not and just show you guys how to work the trim on yours. So yours will look a little bit different. You won't have these two final rows here, but it's the same concept. So you're just gonna take your yarn, make a slip knot, Put your hook through your yarn and then we're just going to add it right here to the front corner. You'll be working into the corner of your ribbing and just do a slip stitch and then chain one. 
and then you're going to just work one single crochet up the side of that ribbing so one single crochet into each stitch of the ribbing and then you're just going to continue on with a single crochet into the sides of the rows of the front panel you can see mine here that i've already completed and i think i did about two single crochet per end of row of the front panel so just work your single crochet up the ribbing and then once you get to the main body of the front panel you can play around with it and just see how many single crochet stitches you want to do once again the stitch count doesn't matter as long as you're working them as evenly as you can i made two single crochet per row all the way up until i reached the back panel and then i just made one single crochet into each stitch along the back panel and then all the way back down the opposite front panel and you're just going to do this until you reach the very bottom corner of the right panel and then once you reach the, reach the corner just chain one and turn your work i'm going to show you right here and just this little section on what you do at that first corner so chain one turn your work and this begins the row two of the trim if you're following along the pattern so this time we're just going to be working our hook through the front loop only so you can see that's the front loop it's the loop that is closest to you instead of working it through the back loop only you can see there's the front and the back we're just going to stick our hook through the front loop only and then just make a normal single crochet so yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then just do this all the way back across so back up the first panel across the back neckline and then back down the second panel until you reach the very first corner where you attached your yarn in the beginning and once you get to that first corner where you attached your yarn and you're back to that first single crochet all you have to do is tie off because we are finished so just yarn over pull your yarn through and then you can cut your yarn and that's it so you should have gone back and forth twice so just two rows for this trim if you want more you can easily add more okay and now our sweater is complete and i'm just going to show you guys how to weave in your ends you'll have a bunch of little ends at the cuffs and at the armpit area and just where you attached your sleeves so we're just going to weave those in to hide them so just use your tapestry needle your yarn needle whatever you have i recommend these thicker plastic ones for the bulky yarn just thread it on your needle and then just take your needle and work it down through some stitches when you're weaving in the ends make sure you do it on the inside of your sweater so i recommend just turning your sweater wrong side out so that way when you're weaving in your ends it's on the same side as your seam and it just helps hide it a little bit better so you can just thread your needle down pull it through don't pull too tightly you don't want to scrunch up the rows or anything like that and then you can take your needle and go back the way you came don't stick it in the same place where your needle came out in the beginning because then you'll just unthread your work so go down a loop and then just thread your needle all the way back down i like to do this two or three times just to make sure it's secure and that it doesn't become unweaved so one more time just insert my needle work it back up pull it through and then you can just cut your yarn and just do this to every end or tail that you have left on your sweater and that's all there is to it thank you guys so much for following along with the street light cardigan i had so much fun making these tutorials and i hope you enjoyed it as well please leave a like or a comment below letting me know what you want to see next from me or what pattern you want to see me do and thank you so much for subscribing and I will see you guys next time.